Long time no see, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to some more videos. And I wanted to do a video on Under Night and Birth because I've been getting request after request for uh, some videos on Under Night and Birth. And I'm definitely going to be doing more of these in the future to help people get prepared for learning this game or even just picking it up as a side game. Whatever the case may be, I'm here to help. The first video that I wanted to kind of do in a, like a guide tutorial series is actually one of the most highly requested videos that people have been asking for me from me. And that is, of course, how does Yuzu work? <laughs> Yuzu is, re is uh, regarded as one of the most complex characters in this game, uh, mostly because she has an in incredibly high execution barrier, not just with her, her combos, but also with her pressure, her neutral, her conversions. They're all very... Uh, they're, they're all very specialist into it. Like, they're very... They're, they require you to spend a lot of time with this character. So, I'm gonna be putting a webcam up with my hands, of course, so you guys can see what I'm doing with the buttons and my stick, so you guys can get a good uh, visual aid as to what I'm doing with the character. But for the most part, uh, I'm gonna be going over every mechanic and, you know, little gimmick that she... She has a lot of gimmicks in this in this game. Uh, well, not, not necessarily gimmicks, but she has a lot of techniques. That's the right word. Techniques that make her a good, great character and a very interesting, complex character. And I'm going to be going over this, so hopefully this will, this will help you kind of know a little bit more about Yuzu before picking her up, or this will be kind of an indicator that you want to pick her up, but you don't want to pick her up. This is not going to be a guide. That guide is for later. <laughs> I want to do get all my bases covered before I do a Yuzu guide, a full-blown out one. I'm going to be going into detail in the, in the guide, but this is going to be a small video detailing some of her techniques that she has, okay? And kind of going over all that stuff. So, first and foremost, let's go over... Her stance uh, buttons so she has some stance holds okay so you see those buttons uh, or those indicators those symbols below her health bar the ABCD so those are the stance buttons so the stance buttons basically let you do whatever you want to do she's one of the few characters that can cancel specials into specials depending on which stance button is open for example if you do any move with the A button whether it be the teleport, which is quarter, uh, uh, DP motion backwards, or just a regular slash, or even uh, flower. So those are actually uh, the A. Those are the A button special moves. And if you hold them, as you can see, she goes into the stance. And this is what these buttons or these symbols represent: your stance buttons. So at this point, you can actually use any sort of special move in a row. So if you want to do like the B and the C, because those are wide open. So there's an indicator that says that you cannot use a specific button. And that's the button that you're using to hold down the stance. So you're holding the stance down with A, so you can't use any A buttons during this time. Okay, so there's, a, there's an exception to this, and that's if you piano. Piano is a very common term with Yuzu, and sliding is a very common term with Yuzu as well. Is because that you can use... A, uh, a, a button or a specific special move with a specific button but hold it down with another button so you can still use that same uh, the same button if that makes sense I know it's starting to kind of be weird but for the most part uh, just look at my fingers basically so if you use the slash the a slash you can't use another a slash or you can't use another just you can't use any other special move with the a slash okay but if you piano the A button, so you can use an A slash, but piano it over to the B button. All of a sudden, you have access to your A slash again. So you can do two A slashes in a row. Just like that. So that's how it usually, that's how the term pianoing came into fruition. Same thing with sliding, same concept pretty much. Um, but for the most part, that's how a lot of Yuzu players um, do like crazy conversions, such as when you do like medium slash, medium slash, like this. And then they convert their their mid-screen slashes like this. So that's how you basically convert from mid-screen. So you can do like slash into ribbon. And then that's where you can get most of your conversions. So that's the the that, that's one of basically like the main gimmick that she has, or the main technique that she has that really makes her a great character. So pianoing is big. Alright. Uh, the next term that I want to talk about is, of course, decanceling. Decanceling is basically, this is the D button right here. So the D button is after, 
So the D button is very essential to Yuzu just because it cancels a lot of her frame uh, or her recovery and certain moves. So for example, this specific flower move, I can't remember the name of the move, but for the most part, this move right here has a little bit of recovery. As you can see, she sheathes her sword there. Do you see how she sheathes her sword like that? Well, let me see if I can... You see how she's like putting the sword back into the sheath? So you can actually cancel that animation out completely and be able to recover, up, I think it's about three, two, three, four frames faster, around there. So, for, so if you press the D button while you actually execute the move, you see that she doesn't sheath the move, so she doesn't sheath the sword, which means that she can recover faster, which makes specific combos possible and such, so you can make routes work better and such, so you can make pressure a lot, a lot safer and a lot more scarier. So, for example, in terms of conversions, uh, when you're converting mid, like mid-screen, so what you pretty much need to do is to do medium slash into medium ribbon, and cancel your 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 uh, not ribbon uh, flower, and then that's when you can go ahead and uh, continue on with your combo because you were able to cancel the 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 ending recovery of that specific move. All right, so that's that's uh, that's uh, D canceling, and this also works for everything else. For example, your your act your slashes. So when you when you do your regular slash. You see that you have a little bit of recovery. You see how it takes a little bit for that for the for the for the symbols or for the stance hold buttons to actually go back to being black, which means that she's back to neutral and she can move around again. So there's actually a way to completely cancel it out immediately, and that's if you decancel them. And you are actually able to act out of it a lot quicker. So there's that, and also you can all, you can incorporate your big slashes to your small slashes and cancel that. So you can do extra, like, very, very fast slashing uh, here and there. So decanceling is huge because you can actually cancel any special move uh, or the recovery of any special move. So you can get better frame data, you can get better combos, better combo routes and such. So that's decanceling in a nutshell, pretty much. Uh, this uh, another application for this is to for a specific combo is the J2C hold combo. So pretty much once you do the slash. So let's for example let's do this. So you go uh uh. You see how that doesn't combo because you are not you're not de canceling the uh, the actual slash because you're still technically in stance at this point. So you can't get the J2C. So what you need to do is once you hit the slash, decancel immediately as you hit the slash, and then what that happens, what that does is you cancel out of your stance, and you are able to use your J2C hold way quicker. So like, you can do things like this, like that. So that's able to be successful. So that's the whole premise of decanceling, just the very basic premise of it. Um, the next thing is de-pairing. Now, de-pairing is one of my favorite aspects about Yuzu. Now, there comes a time where you actually get to use all of your different slashes. So, for example, let's say you use all of your B slashes. How about that? You all, you, you're all of your B stance hold buttons. So, let's say it's black. So, you're holding down the C button right now, and the B slot is completely dark. That means you cannot use another slash unless it comes back, but it comes back over time. But as of right now, you cannot use it until that comes back over time, or if you let go of the stance button and then you do it again, essentially. So, there is actually a way for you to get another medium slash, or another B slash, or another B move in general. Uh, but that requires you to cancel out of the stance altogether, alright? And that's if you press the B button and the D button at the exact same time. And that's D, you're basically pairing your B stance button with your D stance button. And at that point, that's when you cancel out of the stance completely, but you were able to get one last slash out. So you were able to do like a ton of different slashes, like up to three slashes, three or four, I can't remember. Um, but this is how people are able to convert mid-screen uh, easily, like this. So this is what I like to do sometimes. B slash, B slash, and then D pair the flower. So bam, bam, a medium flower, I should say, I'm sorry. I'm doing really bad right now. There it is right there. 
and that's how you're able to convert mid-screen like that so those are one of the coolest things about yuzu now that's a bit of a bit of a more basic conversion like if you want to get to the like the the crazy conversions you have to like decancel you have to decancel like specific things and and get into it you know it's, it's kind of a little more complicated but the most basic uh, example of D pairing that I can give is of course the B slash into B slash into D paired uh, flower. So that is the basic premise of D pairing. You can also do this at the end of combos as well. So that's in the in the the context of pressure or of conversions. Now there's also uh, a way to use this with uh, combos. So like. So like when after the end of that combo, you see I have no more slots at all. So I actually am able to get one more slash in for a little bit more damage. Whoops. There it is right there. So you're able to get out one last slash, even though I had no more slashes to uh, to 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 do. So. Once you deep pair, uh, once you get the hang of deep pairing, that's when you can get one more slash in. You can get Oki uh, and Pressure off of that as well. Instead of like using it for damage, you can just like teleport into it. Like if you're in the mid screen, you want to get a little closer to the opponent, you just teleport to them and such. So this basically applies for every every special move. If you want to do one, one last uh, flower, if you want to do one more uh, teleport, if you want to do one more slash whatever the case may be or even a super you can do whatever you'd like so that's the basic a basic you know example of deep pairing okay one yeah. last quick note before i move on to the final thing of the video which is of course uh something consisting with her stance so when she's in her stance she can actually teleport without actually using any of the buttons and that's when you, you use or when you press uh like forward forward or backwards backwards uh, and you can actually teleport. If you was back back, then you teleport in place essentially. If you use forward forward, you teleport a little bit more forward, which is pretty cool. Um, that's one of the things you can do it on the ground as well. So you can make up some pretty interesting shenanigans with that. Also, her dodge. So in BB tag, uh, where most of the people might have that might know her from, um, she has an auto dodge where when you throw a projectile at her, she actually automatically dodges when she's in stance. In this game, however. You are actually you actually need to press down down you press down down and she does her dodge so it's not automatic you will get hit by a projectile if you do not press down down by yourself and at that point you can hit projectiles and she has a little bit of invincibility she can act out of it immediately it's pretty 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 it's pretty cool <laughs> I love it uh, it's one of my favorite things about Yuzu of course is her her dodge and stance so, but for the most part, that's uh, one of the most commonly, like, frequently asked things about her stance, essentially, is her dodge. You, she can do it in the air, by the way. It's pretty funny. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's basically uh, some of her uh, stance stuff. And the final thing that I wanted to touch up on is, of course, the differentiating damage whenever you do the same combo without Vorpal, with Vorpal excluded. All right, this is not because uh, you have Vorpal, or I'm sorry, yeah, Vorpal on or anything. This is because, uh, this is specific to Yuzu. Now, there might be a time where you do the same, you do uh, the, the combo twice, and it might differentiate in damage. The reason why that's the thing is because she does more damage, or she, or she does, I, I don't know if it's normal average damage, or if that's just a bigger, or just more damage in general than what she normally does, when she's holding down a button. So for example, I'm going to give you an example of uh, a combo that I'm going to do it twice. One, I'm going to be holding down the button, one I'm not, and see the difference. Thirty-two fifty-four compared to 3183, I think. So it does do more damage whenever you hold down uh, a button in stance. Now, as long as that button, so because, here's the reason why is because whenever you're not holding down a button, the game automatically assumes you're holding down the D button. And whenever you hold down the D button, you actually do less damage. As you can see right here, 4, 1430, but if you hold down the C button, you see you do 1445 instead of 1430. 
So that is pretty much the reason why is because the game automatically assumes you're holding down the D button. So if you're not holding down a button other than the D button while you're comboing, you're going to be doing less damage overall. And that's why competitive Yuzu's like the <laughs> that's why Yuzu's very tough because if you want to be optimal with her, you want to do the most damage possible, you're going to have to find a way to be able to make your combo routes work. And for the most part, they're all very consistent as long as you know what to hold for that specific combo routes and such. Uh, if not, then uh, the game is going to assume you're holding down the D button. You're going to do less damage and you're probably not going to get your, cons your, you know, your ideal um, ender for your combo. Which is why holding it with Yuzu is so important. And that's what makes this character so tough. Well, besides Yuzu being, <laughs> being unnecessarily hard... And of course, her having some crazy mechanics and such. I think this character is fantastic. She's one of my favorite characters to play in Undernight. She's such a cool character, fun character. And whenever you pull off the cool combos or the cool conversions or the cool com or the cool confirms, oh man, those are the greatest feeling. And that's why I love this game so much. The main reason why I really picked up this game is because of this girl. And Ever since then, I've been kind of, I opened my eyes to other characters, but Yuzu will still be my number one. I mean, for God's sake, I have her on my ar arcade stick. So anyways, thank you all for watching. Let me know if I missed anything. For the Yuzu experts, if you guys are watching this, let me know if I missed anything so I can make a follow-up video or I can correct myself in the official guide that I'm going to be putting up with Yuzu because uh, I'm going to be working on that very, very soon, of course. So, uh, but for the most part, that's pretty much it for today for me. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you guys have any other questions about Undernight, let me know on Twitter or in the comment section down below. I'll be making more videos like this for Undernight and hopefully we'll be able to, um, you know, convert some people to playing this game because I love this game. Play Undernight and Birth ST or play Uni ST. Come on. Uh, anyways, I'll see you guys later. Uh, let me know. I'll give you a whole YouTube spiel. Follow me on Twitter if you guys want to know anything about me or the channel or Undernight, of course. Subscribe to the channel for more Undernight and Birth ST. Comment in the comment section down below what you guys want to see next from Undernights. And of course, like the video if you guys did. Peace out, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next video.